Hey guys, this is Kerry, and in this video, uh, I'm going to be continuing my soundboard project. So, uh, I've got my soundboard all set up with just HTML and CSS. I added this cool hover effect that I'm pretty stoked about. So now it's time for us to add the audio. So, in order to add the audio, there's a couple of steps. So I actually have two audio files on my computer that I recorded uh, last year of me saying, you're, and me going, nah, bro. And I'm gonna put those two as my sound effects. So I'm gonna drag the audio files onto the internet. And by that, what I mean is I'm gonna drag them into this file section so that I have access to them. If you download your files from the internet, you can do the exact same thing. Uh, a lot of the time if you download a file, a sound effect, or a song from the internet, it will have a complicated title. It will make your life much easier if you have a one word, simple title, and then dot whatever the uh, file extension is. So for sounds, M4A, MP3, WAV, these are all really common sound effect uh, file extensions. So now what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to have a total of six sounds at the end of my project, but I only have two now. So I'm just gonna show you how we're doing it with two. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be adding these audio elements onto the HTML part of our page. This actually won't affect our web page at all. But if we type in audio and then press tab, it will auto-generate an audio element. The source of my audio element is gonna be na.m4a and we have to include the file extension. Also, because we're gonna have many audio elements, I'm gonna give this one an ID of nah. That will make it so that we can access it later with our JavaScript, uh, separate from the other audio elements. I'm gonna type in audio again and press tab, and this time I'm gonna do the same thing for your M4A, and I'm also gonna give that an ID of your. So you'll notice that these audio elements right now are invisible. If I reload my page, nothing appears. Uh, so in order to interact with these audio elements, we're going to change gears now. And uh, oh, actually, before we change gears, the one important thing is these audio elements had to be anywhere above the script tag. Uh, because they're above the script tag, these are going to be created before our JavaScript code runs. But now we need to make them interactable. So let's go into our JavaScript code, which is currently empty. So the way I always begin my JavaScript code is to select all of the elements on the page that we are going to interact with. Uh, so two of those elements are going to be the audio elements. So when I type in green, uh, that means it's a line of code called a comment that's not actually ran, but it helps me to organize my thoughts, uh, as well as make it clear for people who uh, might have a hard time hearing. So let, uh, let's see, your equal document.query selector, hashtag for the ID of your, and then semicolon. So this is kind of like having a CSS selector where when we're in CSS, we're saying, okay, select the body and now style it. In JavaScript, we're selecting the thing with ID of year and storing it in the variable Y-E-R and then we can do stuff with that later, like play this sound. I'm gonna just do some copying and pasting here. I'm also gonna do select the thing with ID of na and call it na, or sorry, it's like the thing with ID of na is this part, hashtag na, ID of na, and store it in the code word na. And you'll have the same thing for four more audio elements. Next up, what we're going to do is we are going to, uh, let's see, I'm also going to select the buttons, which are the images on the page. So to select those images, I'm going to go to my HTML. And I'm going to make sure that each image has an ID. So I'm going to call it like dog, funk, boom, etc. Uh, but I'm just only going to do two because I only have two sounds. 
So this one will be ID of dog. This one will be ID of func. Uh, and all of them should have their own ID. So now in selecting the images, it's going to be a really similar line of code. So let me paste that here. But instead of your, it's going to be dog. Select the thing with ID of dog. And func. Select the thing with ID of func. So now that we've got all of these pieces connected, the image, or not connected, all these images, all these things selected, we've got the images and audio, we need to make them actually interact with each other. So that's pretty simple to do. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say, okay, so take the dog image, and uh, probably the easiest way to do this code is to use our cheat sheet or toolbox Uh, so whenever we want to make it so that when we click on an element, it does something, clicking is an event. So we're going to grab from our toolbox the event listener piece, making sure to include this part down here. So currently, I am going to be adding uh, click event listeners to each image. So I'm going to just set myself up here. I've got two images, dog and func, so I'm going to have two separate event listeners. The first one I'm going to be adding to dog. It's going to be a click type, and this is really tricky to catch if you make this error, so please don't make it. Uh, it's lowercase click. Everything in JavaScript starts with a lowercase, like add event listener, click starts with a lowercase. So when we click on the dog image, the thing with ID of dog, what we want to have happen is we want our your sound to play. It's actually really simple. We just do your dot play. Let's see if it's working. Actually, I don't think I can do that yet because I have this one down here. Uh, let me do the same thing to func. So func is another image. It's the image with ID of func. And we want it to listen for a click type event. And indented in here using the tab button, we're going to put na this element right here, that audio element, we want that to play. So now I think when we refresh it, it will actually work. So you can't hear it, but you can see that the sound effect thing is coming through here. Your, and then, nah, bro. Uh, so my sound effects are working, which I feel really good about. Uh, if your sound effects are not working, something that you can try to figure out what's going on is you could try to add an alert here with just like a letter. And what that will do is it will help you to figure out where your error is. So if I click this now, or sorry, if I do a refresh and then click this, it will do an alert and then make the sound. Your, But I don't really want the alert, so I'm going to delete that. It was just to help me figure out. Uh, if the click was actually working. All right, so if you have longer songs, uh, one problem that you can run into is that when you click one of the buttons, it will actually uh, play a song, and if you click another one, it will play a song, but it won't stop the original song. So one of the nice things about JavaScript is it literally does exactly what you say to do. Uh, so we actually need to tell JavaScript that when we click a button, we want it to, before playing any sound, stop playing all the other sounds. And the easiest way to do that is, let me just put in a comment here. Stop playing the other sounds. And then here, play the correct sound. So to stop playing the other sounds, uh, I actually just make it stop playing every sound. So I say, take the your sound and pause it. Take the na sound and pause it. And if you have six different audios, uh, what you can do is you can put all six to pause. Pause is really stop. All six sounds from playing. And then play the correct sound. And by doing all six, including the one that I'll eventually play, it makes sure that it doesn't overlap with itself. But in addition to that, it just makes it really easy to copy and paste. So I'm going to copy and paste this part here. 
to go before the na sound here. So what you're going to be adding to your page is six different images being selected, at least corresponding to the six different buttons on the page. Uh, six different audio files, uh, and if you need help finding those, a lot of people in the class have ways of getting uh, audio files off the internet, uh, so we can talk about that in class. And then you'll also have six different event listeners where you're telling each image to wait for a click. When an image is clicked, we should stop or pause all the sounds and then play the correct sound. All right, I hope you guys found this video interesting and you'll be able to complete your soundboard projects uh, using it. See you guys in class.